Welcome to our celebration of the day of Pentecost. I'm Pastor Paul, the pastor of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Woodstock, Georgia. With great sadness, I must inform you that we will not be reopening Good Shepherd for in-person worship services or activities next week, as we had so hoped. In an abundance of love and concern, it is the consensus of our congregation council that we cannot provide the necessary safety for you to accomplish that at this time. Last evening, the council appointed a COVID-19 response task force to work through the very detailed guidance for reopening provided by our Synod and by the CDC. At this time, we are not setting another target date for reopening as many things still change from day to day. We will be communicating with you regularly, so continue to be alert for that. We will also continue to post worship services for you on our website. The council has also made the difficult decision to cancel our vacation Bible school this summer. We grieve the loss of this meaningful ministry in our community, but foresee too much risk for the children and the volunteers to gather. Our Sunday School Superintendent Janice continues to post videoed Sunday School lessons for children during the summer and the Zoom Sunday School meetings for middle and high schoolers will also continue throughout the summer. Thanks to all of you who brought in cards for our graduates this week. It is still not too late to do that. There are 10 of them and they are listed in today's bulletin. I'm asking each of you to write congratulation cards for each of them, uh, then bundle them up and mail them to Good Shepherd or drop them off to us. There's a box on a bench on the front porch where you can leave your cards. Thanks for all the ways that you are caring for our community. Here are some important updates on those ministries. Saturday, June 6th, you are invited to participate in a Habitat for Humanity Building Day. Information for registering is in today's worship bulletin. You will need to bring your own breakfast and lunch this time. We also have a third Red Cross blood drive scheduled for Saturday, June 6th. These blood drives are by appointment. If you can give the gift of blood, please sign up. The Red Cross is in desperate need. There are still spots available, so information to sign up is in today's bulletin. We continue to support MUST Ministries with your generous food donations. Thanks to all those who are contributing and to Mike and Mary McCoy for regularly emptying and delivering the contents of the donation barrel. Still, as often as they empty it, and they do often, I don't think I've passed it once on my way into the buildings that it hasn't had food in it. I can't tell you how personally uplifting and meaningful that is for me day after day. The barrel is still on the porch to receive those offerings. Thanks to everyone who has continued to support our congregation financially in these days that are financially stressful for so many people. While we continue to be a part, we want to know what's going on in your homes and families, especially if you have particular needs that we might assist you with. So please keep in touch. We also love receiving your photographs and sharing them in our worship videos, and we hear that you love seeing them. So if you haven't, please snap a picture of yourself or your family and send it to our media coordinator, Donna. We, we love seeing your faces. The worship bulletin for today containing the liturgy that we will be using can be found on our website, www.gslutheran.org. The bulletin also contains additional announcements and information for you. Now, let's begin our celebration of the Pentecost.
If you've ever heard the phrase, the Holy Spirit, and you want to know what it means, where do you start? Well, you have to start on page one of the Bible, where the uncreated world is depicted as this dark, chaotic place. But then above the chaos, God's Spirit is there, hovering, ready to bring about life and order and beauty. Okay, but what is God's Spirit? Yeah, so the Spirit is the way the biblical authors talk about God's personal presence. The Hebrew word is ruach. Ruach. Yeah, you got to clear your throat at the end. So what is it? Well, ruach can refer to a number of different things, but what they all have in common is energy. Energy? How so? So there's an invisible energy that makes the clouds move or the tree branches sway. Right. Wind. So in Hebrew, that's ruach. Okay. Now take a big breath. (sighs) So you feel that inside you. Yeah, the air? Well, specifically the energy, right? The vitality in your body that you get from breathing deeply. That too is ruach. And this is the same word used in the Bible to describe God's personal presence. Just like wind and breath are invisible, God's spirit is invisible. Wind is powerful, and so God's spirit is powerful. And just as breath keeps us alive, so God's spirit sustains all of life. Yeah, ruach. Now, as we continue on in the story of the Bible, we see God's Ruach giving special empowerment to people for specific tasks. The first person in the Bible this happens to is Joseph. God's Spirit enables him to understand and interpret dreams. And then it happens to this guy named Bezalel, and he's an artist. God's Spirit empowers him with wisdom and skills. He's given creative genius to make beautiful things in the tabernacle. And we also see God's Ruach empower a group of people called the prophets. They're able to see what's happening in history from God's point of view. That's exactly right. And here's the problem as the prophets saw it. While God's Ruach had created a really good world, humans have given in to evil. They've unleashed chaos into it through their injustice. A new type of disorder. Yes, and the prophet said the spirit would come, just like in Genesis 1, but now to transform the human heart, to empower people to truly love God and others. How will this new act of God's spirit happen? Well, centuries pass and we are introduced to Jesus. And at the beginning of his mission, there's this beautiful scene where Jesus is being baptized in the waters of the Jordan River. Yeah, the sky opens up and God's spirit comes and rests on him like a bird. The story is saying that God's spirit is empowering Jesus to begin the new creation. And we see this happening when he heals people or forgives their sins. He's creating life where there once was death. Now, Israel's religious leaders oppose Jesus and they eventually have him killed. But even here, God's spirit is at work. The earliest disciples of Jesus, who saw him alive from the dead, said it was God's energizing spirit that raised Jesus. This is the beginning of new creation. Yes, and it's still going. When Jesus appeared to his closest followers, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And soon after that, the spirit powerfully comes on all of his disciples. So that they can become a part of this new creation and share the good news and learn how to live by the energy and influence of God's Spirit. And so today, the Spirit is still hovering in dark places. Yes, pointing people to Jesus, transforming and empowering them so they can love God and others. And the Christian hope is that the Spirit is going to finish the job. The story of the Bible ends with a vision of a new humanity, living in a new world that's permeated with God's love and life-giving Spirit. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water for the water in this font and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. 
To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all time in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, Amen. The first reading is from Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a loud sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them and the tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native tongue? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. 
all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Then I will show portents of the heavens above, and the signs of the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood. For the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Hello out there in the world of what do we do now? Our psalm today is Psalm 104, verses 24 through 34. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, creeping things innumerable are there, living both small and great. There go the ships and Leviathan that you formed to sport in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have been. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who inspires all of them and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given, through the Spirit, wisdom, and to another, knowledge, according to that same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit, and to another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the workings of miracles. To another, prophecy, and to another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of those tongues. All these are inspired by the one and the same Spirit who gives to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free and we were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord.
the Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. I heard a noted preacher say last week that in these days of the coronavirus, Whenever he hears someone say, we're all in this together, he is compelled to respond, we are all in this, but we are not all in this together. He's right, I think. At least I think I know what he means. There are those who believe that science is the main factor to be considered in these present circumstances, and those who believe that the main factor is economics. There are those who think the battle against the pandemic is a partisan political battle, and those who think it is a global health crisis. There are those who protest because they think their liberties are at stake, and those who think the protesters put their liberties at stake. There are those who believe we should remember that risk is just a part of daily life, and those who believe risk should be minimized whenever possible. There are those who minimize the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people and those who are grieving those deaths. There are those who are worried about their investments and those who are worried about where their children's next meal will come from. There are those who can work from home and those who are no longer employed. There are those who can comfortably shelter in place and those who are facing homelessness. There are those with access to health care and those without. There are those who see only one problem that a vaccine will take care of and those who see that a host of societal and ethnic issues have been revealed by our current crisis. There are those who want to blame someone and those who think that in some ways we are all to blame. There are those who believe that faith in God will protect you from the virus and those who believe that when suffering inevitably comes in life, God always shows up. There are those who are desperate for things to get back to normal, and those who believe that our past normal is what has brought us to this crisis. There are those who desperately want to get back to the way things were. 
and those for whom the way things were wasn't really better or different from the way things are now. I think the preacher was right. We are all in this, but we are not all in this together. But couldn't we be? On the day of Pentecost, many Jews were in Jerusalem for the festival, but they were not all in it together. Even the celebration of the festival couldn't really provide unity because they were from many countries and spoke many languages. Their life experiences were different. But Jesus was starting a church, and one of its primary characteristics was supposed to be unity. Unity of mission and purpose. A unified goal of proclaiming the love of God in Jesus Christ to all the world with words and actions. How do you even start such a proclamation when you don't speak the same language as the audience? Jesus had already given his disciples the answer to that question and the tool for the success of their mission, the Holy Spirit. Jesus had promised that the Holy Spirit would come and help and guide them in the ways of Jesus forever. Jesus had told them to wait until the Holy Spirit arrived to get started. Maybe that's why the Holy Spirit's entrance into Jerusalem that day was so dramatic, like the rush of a violent wind and like tongues of fire, so they would know with certainty that the wait was over, so they would get started, so they would trust the Holy Spirit to give them what they needed. In their case, the Holy Spirit solved the language barrier. Suddenly, all those who were in Jerusalem were in it together because they were all hearing the good news of God's love in Jesus Christ, each in their own language. It was news that the suffering world was hungry for and the Holy Spirit gifted Jesus' followers to proclaim it. The Holy Spirit doesn't always show up in such a spectacular fashion. How very different that endowment of the Holy Spirit was from the one narrated in our Gospel reading. In that narrative, after Jesus was raised from the dead and appeared to his disciples, Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit into them. The Holy Spirit was a breath, not a wind and fire. Yet not just a breath. To say it was just a breath is to say that when God breathed into a pile of dirt and created humans, it was just a breath. In both cases, it was the life-giving breath of God. In both instances, the breath of God did unimagined things. In the first instance, God's breath caused humans to live and breathe. God's breath created relationships between humans and between humans and God and between humans and the earth. In the second instance, God's breath turned a group of scared people locked away in hiding into 
passionate evangelist, and in many cases, martyrs. God's breath caused them to live in new and brave and countercultural ways. God's breath caused them to all be in it together. Today is the anniversary of a very special day in my life. On Pentecost Day, May 31st, 1981, you do the math, I was ordained as a pastor in the Lutheran Church. In that service, other pastors laid their hands on my head and they prayed, Eternal God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, pour out your Holy Spirit upon Paul and fill Paul with the gifts of grace for the ministry of word and service. Send your power and blessing that Paul may carry out this ministry with faithfulness and perseverance. From the beginning of my life as a pastor, I have known that the Holy Spirit would bring the answers to my questions and the power to my efforts and the discernment to my path, even in the worst of circumstances. Actually, I could say that that has been true for my whole life since my baptism. On July 1st, 1956, I have experienced those things. That day, a pastor put his hand on my head and prayed, Sustain Paul with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. I don't actually remember that, being six weeks old. But I do remember when I was confirmed as a teenager, and the pastors put their hands on my head and prayed, Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Paul the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith. Guide his life. Empower him in his service. Give him patience in suffering and bring him to everlasting life. I had a friend who, during her daily walks, prayed that prayer for each of her children and grandchildren individually by name every day. What a beautiful gift. I suspect that those or very similar prayers have been prayed over each of you on occasion, perhaps in your baptism or your confirmation or when you joined a new congregation. The Holy Spirit has been breathed into each of us. And the Holy Spirit has been breathed into this congregation and into the whole church. I think the confirmation prayer works quite well to pray for our congregation these days. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Good Shepherd congregation the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm our faith, guide our life, empower us in our serving, give us patience in suffering, and bring us to everlasting life. We are in a global pandemic, and the whole world is suffering. 
We are all in it, but we are not all in it together. The church needs the unifying Holy Spirit breathed into it day by day because the world needs the church to proclaim the good news of God's love in Jesus Christ. It's probably not going to be easy. It's never been easy to be the church if you're doing it right. So how will the church navigate the next steps? What do we do with so many different thoughts and opinions? How will we proclaim the love of God in Jesus Christ to the suffering world with our words and our actions? Jesus has already given us the answer to our questions and the tool for our mission and ministry, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our unifying language. The Holy Spirit turns our varied opinions to the common good. The Apostle Paul wrote to the congregation at Corinth, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Coincidentally, that passage was also read at my ordination on May 31st, 1981. <clears throat> or maybe that's not a coincidence. Maybe the Holy Spirit is once again reminding me and you and Good Shepherd Congregation what has been with us and in us all along. The Holy Spirit. Maybe the Holy Spirit is once again reminding us of the mission and ministry of proclaiming God's love in the world. Maybe the Holy Spirit is pointing out that our definition of all is typically much less inclusive than God's definition of all. Maybe the Holy Spirit is reminding us that we already have the language and the tools to actually all be in this together. Maybe the Holy Spirit is ready to come and do new things in the world. Maybe the Holy Spirit will come anew with some spectacular display or as a breath but the Holy Spirit will come when we pray for it so let's come Holy Spirit Amen
With the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and, the, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of abundant life and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We call in your spirit of unity, giving thanks for our different vocations and abilities. Activate and utilize the diverse gifts present in your church that they reveal your love for all, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We call in your spirit of life, Heal with your breath, your whole creation, and teach us to manage the earth's resources faithfully. Lord, in your mercy. We call in your spirit of righteousness. Wherever we as a people are divided, unite us. Wherever we are prideful, humble us. Give us each a heart for injustice and empathy. Lord, in your mercy. We call in your spirit of healing. Bless the nurses, doctors, and all those who care for those in need. We pray for all who long for comfort, including those on our continuing prayers list and those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. We call in your spirit of wisdom, guide researchers and those who make and administer health policy that they may lead us through the global pandemic. Lord, in your mercy. We call in your spirit of friendship. Give us a spirit of welcome to those whom we meet in this congregation and outside these doors. Surprise us daily with unexpected grace, that we rejoice in every blessing you send. Lord, in your mercy. We call on your spirit of hope. As you have led your saints in all times and places, stir in the, us the desire to follow their example, leading us from death to new life in you. Lord, in your mercy. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also, also with you. you. Let us share Christ's peace with one another. God's peace, everyone. Peace to you, Lord. Peace, everyone. Peace, peace. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace be with you. Peace and blessings to all. Amen. 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 Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the one who raised Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Amen.
bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Oh, Amen. Amen.